the State Transportation Board to order. And we'll start with an invocation and I'll invite you all to rise if you're able. I'm a little nervous, so I'm going to read it. I'd like to offer a prayer this week. Our Georgia transportation family lost our friend, Jeff Parker. We ask you, dear God, that Jeff be at peace, that you comfort Jeff's family and friends and all who loved him, and that Jeff's memory be for a blessing. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, I welcome you all this morning. Our chair. Uh, Emily Dunn is in San Antonio, where she told me this morning when she called to offer her any advice or answer any questions for me, she said it's snowing in San Antonio, so <laughs> believe it or not, snowing in San Antonio. So here we are in Georgia, and at least it's just raining. Anyway, um, I want to ask Kristen to take the roll. Yeah, thank you. Um, I will start with District 1, Ms. Purcell. Present. Two, Mr. Floyd. Present. Three, Mr. Carricker. Four, Mr. Brown. Present. Five, Ms. Key. Six, Mr. Abel. Present. Seven, Mr. Bowen. Here. Eight, Mr. Golden. Here. Nine, Ms. Dunn. Here. Ten, Mr. Bothell. Here. 11, Mr. Lewis. Here. 12, Mr. Morris. Here. 13, Ms. Lemon. Here. And 14, Mr. Sharon. Here. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, great. Well, let's um, invite anyone to make a motion to approve the minutes from the December board meeting. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Thank you. Okay, next on the agenda is the February letting. Um, Albert, will you come forward and present to us, please? So, good morning, Board Commissioner. I'm here today to present the, the, the department is proposing for the advertise for the February 2022 letting. So, before we present February 2022, here are the FY 2022 results so far. We have led a total of 121 projects in FY 2022. This chart shows the number of projects by improvement type. The value of these 121 projects is approximately 593 million due to December 2021 bid awards with 118 GDOT let projects worth approximately 586 million and three local let projects worth 6.81 million. This chart shows the dollar amount distribution by improvement type with maintenance, bridge, and road projects making up the bulk of these types. Here are the results of the December 2021 letting. Of the 24 GDOT let contracts presented to the board, all were awarded. Now I'm gonna discuss the projects in the February 2022 letting. We have a total of 18 projects, all are GDOT let, the next two slides list those 18 projects arranged by congressional district. So as you can see with this slide, we are letting a variety of projects throughout the state to address bridge, capacity, maintenance, and safety issues. The first highlighted project is the replacement of the structurally deficient bridge on Pede Road over Thames Creek. The existing bridge was constructed in 1965, 57 years ago. Here's a ground view of that bridge to be replaced. This next project will reduce crash frequency and severity for pedestrians along State Route 13, which is Buford Highway, from Afton Lane to Shallowford Terrace in DeKalb County. This project is 2.6 miles in length 
and will improve safety by adding raised medians, improving sidewalk and crosswalk conditions, and adding lighting. This is a great example of improving safety conditions for Georgia's pedestrians. This next highlighted project will resurface I-75 from I-85 to the Chattahoochee River for 6.6 .6 miles. This heavily traveled section of I-75 was last repaid in 2011, 11 years ago, and it's an excellent example of our continued commitment to maintain our existing infrastructure. This project, funded with both bond funding and state motor fuel funds, will widen State Route 9 from two lanes to four lanes with a raised median from the Fulton Forsyth line to McFarland Road for approximately one mile. This project will help reduce congestion by providing additional travel lanes as an excellent example of our commitment to improving traffic conditions. This next project, in partnership with the city of Valdosta, will construct a two-way left turn lane on Jerry Jones Drive from Bay Tree Road to Oak Street for 2.2 miles. This two-way left turn lane will remove turning movements from the through lanes and by doing so will improve safety and operations. This project is the replacement of the structurally deficient bridge on Clack Road over Little River. The existing bridge was constructed in 1965, 57 years ago. Here's a ground view of that bridge to be replaced. This next project is a replacement of the structurally deficient bridge on Hillman Road over Little River. The existing bridge was constructed in 1961, 61 years ago. Here's a ground view of that bridge to be replaced. The final highlighted project is the replacement of the structurally deficient bridge on State Route 26 over Ahupi River. The existing bridge was constructed in 1962, 60 years ago. Here's a ground view of that bridge to be replaced. The next project grouping will be advertised in February 2022 through a design build delivery methodology. The actual letting is in June, but we are advertising these projects early to receive an abundance of, abundance of quality bids. Here's that project package. This project grouping will replace six structurally deficient bridges on Elam Church Road over Fallen Creek, Rice Road over Fallen Creek, Smithville Road over Mukalochi Creek, Morgan Road over Simachachobe Creek, Recreation Camp Road over Pachachilla Creek, and Cox Road over Mossy Creek. I practiced that a few times. So, yeah. So we have 18 projects proposed for the February 2022 letting. This chart shows the distribution by improvement types. The estimate of the projects in the February 2022 letting is approximately 109 million. This chart shows the dollar amount distribution by improvement type. Now as for consideration for approval for the proposed projects presented for the February 2022 letting. Thank you, Albert. I'll entertain a motion um, to approve the letting. Are there any questions? No questions? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you very much, Albert. Thank you. Okay, next on the agenda is approval of um, revisions to the construction work program. Matt Markham, Deputy Director of Planning. You have the floor. Good morning, thank you, uh, Chairman, Board Members, Commissioner. I'm coming before you this morning um, for proposed revisions to the construction work program. Um, like I do many months, I'm bringing before you um, a project that's uh, for your awareness this month that'll be brought back next month for action and then bringing one to you that I um, gave you awareness about last month um, that is coming to you for action uh, today. So the first one is um, one that I'm bringing to your attention that'll come for, um, for action at next month's meeting. Um, it is a, um, an addition to the construction work program um, in Morgan County. It's a new interchange on I-20. Um, at Old Mill Road, um, and this is for access uh, to the East Atlanta mega site. Um, so this is one um, a proposed addition to the work program um, that'll come back to you next month for action. Okay, and so the, the next one I'm bringing to you is for um, action today. Oops. Yeah, there it is. Okay, um, and this is one again I brought to you last month. Um, it is a streetscape project in the city of Warner Robins in Houston County. 
Um, this project has um, locally matched um, portion of it, and the city has asked that this project be deleted uh, from the work program um, as they look to review their priorities in the local area and decide um, how they want to um, position their city in the future. They're asking that this project be removed at this time. So this one does come to you for action this morning. Okay, I'll entertain a motion for the proposed change to the construction work program. Any questions for Matt? Hearing none, um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And the motion passes. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Commissioner, you are up. Thank you, sir. Good morning, Mr. Vice Chair, ladies and gentlemen of the board. It's a pleasure to be with you. Uh, before I get into my normal presentation, um, uh, one, I want to acknowledge uh, Mr. Abel's uh, wonderful prayer, acknowledging the loss of Jeff Parker, and it is with truly heavy hearts uh, that we, the Georgia Department of Transportation, uh, acknowledge our loss in Jeff's passing. And uh, as you know, Jeff uh, has been the CEO of MARTA. Before that, he was the office lead for HNTB here in Atlanta, and um, it, is, uh, it has been a tough few days uh, since the learning of Jeff's passing. Um, Jeff certainly has put his fingerprints on transportation, uh, not only here in Atlanta for MARTA, but all over Georgia and all over the nation for that matter. Uh, the transit world is a pretty small world when you look at how many large transit providers there are across this nation. It's not that many. So Jeff's impact will be remembered for a very long time. And uh, with that, I just ask that you continue to keep his family in your thoughts and prayers, as well as the Marta family and, and all that knew Jeff. Uh, there, uh, this is a, certainly a diff most difficult time. And I just... Uh, in addition, just ask that we take just a moment uh, again to uh, keep Jeff in your thoughts and prayers. Let's just take one quick moment of silence. Thank you very much. Let me uh, transition into our normal presentation, starting with our state fund collections uh, for last month, December. Uh, totaled $182.4 million. The breakdown of that was $166 million in excise, which is up about 11% uh, from December of last year. Fiscal year to date uh, brings total collections to $1.18 billion. Uh, the breakdown of that is $1.01 billion in excise, $104.7 million in transportation fees, uh, give you that total. And again, at December, that means we're halfway through our fiscal year. Uh, Angela presented budget yesterday for 23, being a total of 2.17 billion. And we're halfway through, so we're at 1.18 billion. So that trajectory is a very good trajectory. And I remind you that our budget is based on collections and one year are appropriated in the next. So this 22 per Project 22 collections is what builds the 23 budget that she presented yesterday. So that is certainly good news. Year to date, uh, total uh, motor fuel uh, is about 12% ahead. So December was about 11% ahead of December last year. Year to date, about 12%. So those are good trajectories. And our traffic patterns certainly reflect the consumption of, of people being out and about. Uh, moving into our employment update, uh, Monica Ivey gave a fantastic presentation of all that HR is doing for recruitment and retention uh, here at GDOT. Uh, that gave us an employment figure that she mentioned yesterday of 3,637 full-time employees. We do have 19 maintenance temporary staff that very quickly we onboard and add those to the headcount. Uh, last month, we hired 54 employees and there was 35 separations. And as, as she showed you yesterday, sort of the trend had is beginning to reverse of uh, net losing and now we're net gaining, trying to gain back. So great presentation yesterday. In the procurement report, 
Uh, for last month, we had 116 professional contracts uh, awarded, uh, totaling about $54 million. That brings fiscal year to date contracts, again, halfway through the fiscal year to 971 contracts executed at $415 million for advancement of our projects in the professional services arena. So again, a, a heavy lift and another uh, high trajectory of procurement moving forward. So great job there. Now let's jump into a few projects that had opened to traffic since we together last month. And uh, we'll start in Congressional District 1 <coughs> down in Bryan County, which is also GDOT District 5. Uh, this project consisted of construction of roundabouts at State Route 144 and I-95. This makes the second interchange in Bryan County with roundabouts. There's a great picture of that. The contractor was Reeves Construction Company, opened up the traffic finally about December 12th of last month. It represents a $10.5 million operational and safety benefit and certainly makes a difference for that very busy interchange. So we're excited about this project being uh, open to traffic. And also the 144 corridor is a, is a very busy corridor in that part of the world. Moving to our next project in two congressional districts, in District 4 and Congressional District 10, which split the Henry and Newton County line by the South River, is a project to reconstruct uh, the existing bridge on State Route 81 over the South, Re South River. The contractor was Wright Brothers Construction Company opened the traffic on December 17th. And as you can see, it's a long bridge. In fact, it's almost half a mile. Uh, so it's a big, big long bridge over that river and overflow area. Uh, represents a $5.6 million capital investment for bridge uh, reconstruction. It opened the traffic uh, just ahead of schedule. Uh, actually scheduled to finish in February 25. So we're proud that this one is ahead of schedule. Moving into the next project in Congressional District 9 up in Lumpkin County, which is also GDOT District 1, is another roundabout project at State Route 9 and State Route 52. Uh, the contractor was Grizzle Grading and Excavating, open to traffic December 19th, representing a $4.9 million safety and operations investment. Building roundabouts in the mountains are a little, a little bit tricky. Uh, so obviously a higher value roundabout that certainly uh, took an old sort of Y intersection and made this much safer and certainly operate a lot better. And this one was also completed ahead of schedule. For my final project to highlight, uh, this will be in Congressional District 14 up in Catoosa County, actually in Ringgold, which is GDOT District 6. This is a major capital uh, expansion project of reconstructing State Route 151 from south of Rollins Industrial Park over to US 41 in Ringgold. It also included the interchange reconstruction at I-75 there in State Route 151. The contractor was C.W. Matthews uh, Contracting Company. It represents a $55.7 million project. So widening and interchange reconstruction uh, for $55.7 million. This project was completed just ahead of the completion date of last month. So uh, good job. So some good projects open since we were together last time. Now I appreciate uh, Chairman Dunn being in Texas and keeping snow in Texas. So let me let me talk a little bit about the weather winter weather response that we uh, worked through last week and, and into early this week and. Uh, Again, just to highlight the dedicate, dedication and commitment uh, of our employees, where we started early last week with weather service briefings, seeing that a very large storm system uh, potential existed for Georgia. The preparations began, and by Thursday, everybody was had a plan of action uh, for a very big, again, statewide response. As you can see on these graphics, uh, which are just a few graphics from the Weather Service, the impact was very large. And so by Friday morning uh, last week, we began our pre-treatment uh, pre-treatment of applying brine on all the interstates and state routes, a 100% coverage of our responsibilities, which is pretty amazing. Uh, because of this, because of the impact of the size of the storm, uh, it was, uh, a 
concern. So it was all hands on deck, meaning that we brought crews from District 4 and District 5 here into the metro area to implement their metro brining uh, teams and their plow teams. Uh, as we looked at the size of this storm, there was 19,500 miles of roads that had to be treated. So think about driving 19,500 miles. We didn't drive it once, we drove it multiple times in spray and brine. In fact, we put out 900,000 gallons of brine in the first application. And in total, we applied over 1.5 million gallons of brine. Think about that. And also 3,000 tons of salt were spread. And it, as I said, all hands, which means about 2,000 employees. That ranges from maintenance and operations to procurement to HR to intermodal. Uh, I'm gonna leave every, I'm gonna leave people out, but it's believe me, it's all hands when uh, when we have a, a event of this size. As we headed into Saturday night, is that first slide I just showed you? Wind was something that we were not accustomed to in snow and ice events, but extremely high gust, uh, ice predictions, and uh, there was a lot of trees down power lines down, uh, especially in the I-85, 985 corridor up, up to South Carolina, sort of that radial uh, uh, geographic area between 85, 985, up Habersham County, Stevens County, and the lot. So a big impact uh, as the wind subsided and the snow sort of moved out, uh, black ice was what we were faced with as the lingering effect, so we continued to treat the roads. Uh, while that was going on, and you can see these pictures of the Brian crews working to get out, we had fantastic media coverage, and I want to commend our strategic communications office for working with the media and getting the message out and, and working. And we had a lot of a lot of media coverage for sure. Uh, in fact, media driving around following us to see how we're doing. So uh, you know, a lot of attention. So with that being said, uh, communications thought it was important to thank the citizens because one of the things we asked for were to people stay home. Now, obviously, Sunday and the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday certainly helped to lessen traffic, but it gave us the ability to do our job. So I'm really proud communications thought it was time to say thank you. And uh, you can see that there's the media, a lot of the social media. Natalie was everywhere. She didn't sleep for a few days. Uh, maybe more than a few days, so uh, hopefully she's well rested now. Uh, but here's a video. Hi, I'm Natalie Dale with the Georgia Department of Transportation, and we have a lot of thank yous to say right now. First of all, to our crews and to our staff, the over 2,000 GDOT employees who are activated for this winter storm. Uh, whether you live in the region or whether you are activated from South Georgia up to the region, we thank you for doing what you do best, keeping Georgians moving safely. And to you, to you, the Georgians out there who stayed at home when we needed you to. We have been looking at the traffic and it is a light traffic day out there. So that means you did exactly what we asked. And that was so important to keep our crews safe and to keep them working efficiently through this storm. So thank you for helping us out during this winter storm activation. I'm Natalie Deal with the Georgia Department of Transportation. All right, obviously Natalie can do that a lot better than I can. Yeah. Great job for our, our crews. And now I will tell you, as, uh, when the pavement's wet and the temperature is supposed to be below freezing, that's, uh, that's a concern. <laughs> so, but great job. And uh, just to add on, we are certainly watching the weather. We've had weather briefings. There's another one today about what's coming for this uh, Friday into Saturday. Uh, so we're paying close attention and crews are being uh, on the ready to respond to whatever that forecast may be. So let me uh, move now to, again, I always like to highlight some awards and recognition. And this is really an awesome award, uh, an AASHTO Innovation Award. So this is a national award about innovation. And so we submitted, the Traffic Operations Office submitted an analytics dashboard and platform for automated traffic signal performance measures. That's not as hard as what Albert had to say, but that's a mouthful. Uh, so well, I'm proud to say that we won that award for AASHTO Innovation Initiative. Uh, this innovation initiative recognizes all types of innovation from agencies and peer-to-peer -peer agencies uh, for the purpose of trying to share this information such that others can gain uh, that knowledge and potentially put it in use in their own agency. So 
Uh, we're really proud to highlight this. The automated traffic signal performance measures support objectives and performance-based approaches to traffic signal operations, maintenance management, and design to improve safety, mobility, and efficiency of traffic signals. We gave some presentations on this. It's probably been a year or more ago about this technology that we're using, which allows us to really triage and be responsive to signal issues remotely. And all the signals across the state have been deployed with the technology so we can do that. So we can be more strategic, be more responsive to customers. If they call with a signal complaint, we can sort of triage it from remotely and not have to send crews out often, including making uh, adjustments to signal timing and the like. Uh, and I can tell you during the winter weather event, we were able to know what signals didn't have power, which ones were flashing and trying to triage those. Obviously power is one issue we can't control, uh, but uh, we were able to really see what was going on there. There are so many benefits as I talked about, uh, again, just efficiency of the system by being able to adjust uh, uh, signal timing and seeing what's going on. And also has really helped just to, with customer service when somebody calls in and complains about a signal. We're able to look at it, see what's going on with it, and make an adjustment if one's necessary. So congratulations to our traffic operations team for a job well done. And, uh, and we'll continue to uh, innovate and be creative in what we do here in Georgia. There's another, uh, I know that's hard to see, and if you want a deep dive in those graphs, I'll have to get somebody to help you with that. <laughs> All right. So Josh yesterday uh, mentioned and talked about the e-commerce and freight funding report that the Joint Commission had worked on last year. And in part of that, obviously, uh, there's a strong partnership with the uh, House and Senate, with the Georgia Chamber and the Georgia Transportation Alliance. And they have been working on something called Can't Wait for Freight campaign to really support the work that the Joint Commission mm -hmm. moved forward with to recognize that mm -hmm. <laughs> nearly 6 million tons of freight are carried out through Georgia each week. Six million tons through Georgia each week. So uh, a really big impact there. Obviously Georgia's uh, being recognized as the best state in which to do business for eight years in a row. The Port of Savannah, the Port of Brunswick and our inland ports have such a, we have such a competitive advantage on the Eastern seaboard uh, that the Chamber and the Georgia Transportation Alliance wants to continue to focus on how do we make sure that we don't lose ground in that competitive, not only uh, national or eastern regional competitive, but global competitiveness. So they have launched the Can't Wait for Freight campaign, and uh, they have a, a video I thought I would share with you because it's super well done and tells a great story about Georgia and why uh, investment in infrastructure for freight and e-commerce is very necessary. So here we go, I'm gonna play this. As the number one state to do business for the last eight years, Georgia is the envy of the nation. Over the last decade, Georgia has led the pack in economic development, job creation, an opportunity for our citizens and businesses. And it's not by accident, Georgia's political leaders, elected officials, and businesses have worked diligently in partnership with one another to create a transportation foundation that has stimulated and sustained that growth. In the early 2010s, local transportation splashed passed in 46 counties across Georgia. Today, over 100 counties have passed local funding initiatives, investing over $3.8 billion in local transportation priorities. The legislature and governor partnered with the business community to pass the Transportation Funding Act of 2015, a generationally transformative transportation funding that increased our annual investment by $1 billion each year. In 2018, the legislature passed the first significant transit funding and governance legislation in almost three decades. In 2020, the legislature updated Georgia state law to allow for better public-private partnership investment in freight and logistics projects. Over the last decade, the state of Georgia has invested over 300 million of our hard-earned dollars in the deepening of the Savannah Harbor. And the Georgia Ports Authority 
has invested millions to become one of the top deep water ports in the United States. Because of that leadership, Georgia is home to one of the most robust transportation networks in the United States. With the world's busiest airport, the fastest growing port in the United States, and a freight rail network that travels thousands of miles each day, Georgia is poised for success. And growth has become our brand. Economic growth, industrial growth, commercial growth, and population growth. Between 2010 and 2020, Georgia grew by almost 1 million residents, and some estimates suggest we will grow by another 2 million by 2040. The COVID-19 pandemic brought radical changes to the demands placed on our transportation networks and providers. Over the last 24 months, consumers have dramatically accelerated trends that were already in place. Some experts believe we experienced a decade of growth in e-commerce in just 90 days. Other experts predict that by 2040, 95% of all retail purchases will be online. To address this demand, our Class 1 railroads are now operating trains up to three miles long. The Port of Savannah set a new record last October, processing over 500,000 TEUs and will add another 1.6 million TEUs of on-terminal capacity by June of this year. Our nation's trucking industry will grow by 5% in 2022 and cover almost 500 million miles by 2045. Commuter traffic has rebounded to higher than pre-pandemic levels. This growth presents Georgia with a clear opportunity, which means we must make significant investments in expanding the capacity of the roads, bridges, grade crossings, freight rail lines, airports, inland ports, intermodal facilities, and distribution facilities that make up our freight and logistics network. Even amid the current supply chain crisis, Georgia is poised to become the freight and logistics capital of the eastern seaboard and possibly the entire United States to truly become the freight state. But these improvements cannot wait. That's why the Georgia Transportation Alliance, in partnership with the Georgia Chamber of Commerce, is launching the Georgia Can't Wait for Freight campaign. We invite you to join us as we spend 2022 educating Georgia citizens, businesses, and elected leaders about Georgia's decade of progress in transportation and the decade of opportunity before us. Because Georgia truly can't wait for freight. Learn more at www.can'twaitforfreight.com. I want to thank the Chamber and GTA for putting their emphasis on what freight means to Georgia and obviously for focusing on how do we continue to deliver uh, for Georgia. So a great partnership there. Certainly appreciate what they've done. Let me move into the next agenda item. And, and uh, Matt mentioned this as you did your CWP uh, notice for work program. And it was the announcement that happened last month of Rivian coming uh, off of I-20 over in uh, the area of a joint development authority and the uh, right off I-20, the Old Mill Road he had there would be a new interchange. Uh, we're proud that the department will be supporting the economic development effort of 7,500 jobs and $5 billion of private investment by making some transportation improvements. Very similarly how we did for Kia when Kia moved over to LaGrange and West Point, Georgia. So uh, we are be working with uh, the team. Uh, in fact, Andrew Heath, uh, Deputy Chief Engineer, is working with economic development as the point person for the department as these projects move forward. And so we'll keep you, keep you informed as things move forward. But uh, certainly a great jobs announcement. Uh, certainly Georgia has a large presence in the EV connected or the EV uh, uh, industry uh, with a lot of things. Uh, Bluebird Bus down in middle Georgia is developing and building electric school bus. A company called Helox is an uh, EV charging company that's based here in Atlanta. Uh, just recently over in Covenant, another jobs announcement for battery recycling. So a lot of things, a lot of industry here in Georgia in and around the EV community and a great partner with Rivian certainly will be a game changer uh, for this state. So uh, we'll keep you in tune as 
those projects developed. Let me move into another topic here, uh, one of uh, very important, high importance to us, and it's uh, about the Adopt a Highway Maintenance Corporation partnership we have. And if you remember back into 2020, we launched the Keep It Clean Georgia campaign, again, to focus on uh, trying to keep people from littering, first and foremost, because it cost us over $10 million a year just to pick up litter. And uh, communications launched this with partnerships with chambers and cities and economic development around the state to really put this focus on uh, keep it clean. Of course, the pandemic hit in 2020 as well. So for a while, people weren't driving as much. But believe me, as that video just showed, traffic is back. So this is actually an enhancement to our initial campaign of Keep It Clean Georgia by enhancing that with a partnership that we have with the Adopt a Highway Maintenance Corporation, which we already have in place. Uh, Chris DeGrace and the State Maintenance Office manages this program. And so it's now really a great connection of our current signs and sponsorships for, uh, for the uh, program is this Clean Georgia which doesn't marry up to the to the keep it clean Georgia. So now these signs will change so that our marketing and messaging is uniform across the state. So this is a really a big uh, announcement. We certainly appreciate the partnership with uh, the Adopt a Highway Maintenance Corporation that we already have in place and for their willingness to partner in this effort. Uh, later this morning, communications will be putting out a press release and relaunching sort of the, the uh, messaging campaign to remind people to keep it clean Georgia. And you can remember that they had some really catchy little taglines and some great photography there for social media and for print media. Uh, and so this will be going back out today to, again to try to reemphasize, let's keep Georgia clean. So keep it clean Georgia. They didn't put my favorite one up there, but I'm not gonna say it out loud, but it, it involved a hydroelectric dam. Uh, you can guess the headline. All right, let me conclude on a high note again uh, today with the great work and the dedication and commitment of our employees in the winter weather response last year, I mean last year, last week, it's been that kind of week. Um, but, you know, our employees are our best asset. As Monica talked about that yesterday in her presentation, I was able to mention that in our joint appropriations hearing uh, that we had on Tuesday as well of just how wonderful our employees are and what a great job they do. And this last update is an example of that. And uh, it, back in uh, December, uh, Demetrius Ford, who's a 19-year 19 19-year 19 GDOT veteran and a highway foreman down in District 5, received kudos on a Facebook post praising him for going above and beyond, where Demetrius actually stopped on the side of the road in the rain with heavy traffic to assist and make sure a citizen that was broken down was okay and protected. And uh, it was noted that his positive attitude and showed true concern for citizens of Georgia uh, was exemplified in the post and certainly acknowledging his hard work and willingness to go above and beyond, not just driving by, but to stop to make sure, sure somebody was safe and could be taken care of. So this is just one example. You know, we often don't get, uh, comments like this, but so many employees stop and help people out uh, all across this state. But we're very proud for Demetrius to, to stop and offer assistance and very proud for the Griffin uh, here to, uh, to respond and let us know what a great job he's did. So uh, Mr. Vice Chair, that concludes my report. I'd be glad to entertain any questions or comments. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. I'll, I'll start with the, the first comment. Um, I guess the privilege of the seat I sit in, right? And and I'll say this: I've I think I've witnessed approximately 30 of your reports to the board over the last you know two almost three years that I've been on the board, and it it always amazes me the the anapoly, is that a word of of things you bring to the board that reflect the tremendous work of the Georgia Department of Transportation. And it, it, it always makes me swell with pride. I, I tell all my friends, anyone who listens to me about uh, the great uh, Georgia Department of Transportation. And so I thank you for that. You know, everything from, you know, all of the, the work that you've talked about, you know, all the way to Demetrius's, um, you know, acts of kindness. Um, 
you know, with respect to last weekend's um, storm weather, you know, you kept us, you kept the board informed with what was happening. And, you know, on behalf of the board, I'd like to express our appreciation to all the men and women of the, the department, you know, who, you know, went out and, and you know, treated the roads and, and kept them safe, mm -hmm. as, as well as, you know, members of, of the executive staff who, who stayed up all night, you know, in the operations center, you know, doing the work that needed to be done. Um, you know, I shared those emails with my wife, you know, uh, Cindy is, is one of those people who likes to check the weather all the time and, you know, gets a little um, unnerving, you know, when you're anticipating snow three weeks in advance. But, you know, both of our kids were on the road this last weekend. Um, you know, something happened in Athens, you know, some team won a big game and there was a big party in, in Athens on Saturday. And, and both of our kids landed up being in Athens even though one of them goes to Georgia Tech. Everyone's celebrating this one. And, and, you know, they had to drive home, one on Saturday and one on Sunday. And, you know, I heard my wife on the phone with my son saying, um, you know, you've got to be careful. And he's saying the roads are fine. And she says, no, the commissioner of the Georgia Department of Transportation said. And so um, he drove anyway. But, but thank you, thank you for, for everything that the department does. And is there anyone else who has any questions or comments for the commissioner? Okay, thank you, Russell. Thank you. Okay, moving on in the agenda, we have Andrew Honig from the Innovative Delivery Department, who's gonna to talk to us about the alternative contracting methods um, that we heard about last month. You know, this is something near and dear to my heart, you know, uh, steer, uh, chairing the, the P3 Steering Committee. You know, the, the, the idea of innovative delivery is so critical to our state being able to take on certain kinds of projects and be competitive and, and do things that we ordinarily couldn't do. And so, you know, this is really important and I appreciate what the department is doing um, to further these um, procurement efforts. So, Andrew, go ahead. Uh, very good. Thank you and good morning, Mr. Vice Chair, and members of the board and commissioner. Again, I'm Andrew Hainig. I'm here today to talk about the uh, uh, chapter 672 of the board rules and regulations. And I have been here before. I was here in the November board meeting. And at that board meeting, I walked through um, the nine new rules of the chapter and kind of uh, detailed what is in those uh, rules. And again, it covers, like you just mentioned, uh, new alternative contracting methods, CMGC, PDA, and CDA. Uh, and also at that November board meeting, we were seeking favorable approval to advertise the rules to the public. Uh, since that board meeting, we did advertise them uh, from November to December. We uh, advertised them on the GDOT website, as well as certain newspaper publications. Uh, we did receive three requests for the board rules uh, through email. And so we did provide those rules as, uh, as they came in. We did not, however, receive any public comments during that period. Uh, I will, however, note that prior to advertising uh, the, the rules publicly, we did reach out to the contracting community and the consultant community. And so we had already uh, incorporated their comments into the rules. Uh, so by the time they were advertised, the industry had already weighed in. So again, though, we did not receive any public comments during the 30-day advertisement period. Um, so with that said, I'm going to read here just so I get the wording exactly right. We're now today requesting that the board approve the resolution adopting chapter 672-22 of the rules and regulations governing alternative contracting methods. Thank you, Andrew. I'll entertain a motion. Second. Are there any questions for Andrew? Okay, let's take a vote then. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And the motion passes. Thank you, Andrew. Okay, next on the agenda is a retirement resolution for Van Mason. And, oh, sorry, John. Oh, I thought we were going to have Van Mason. He's retired. He's not. We are. Oh, he's not. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's next. Oh, okay. Excuse me. I apologize. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, yeah, Ann, would you like to take the project? You know, it's always a pleasure to stand in front of the board, but it's not a pleasure when we're saying congratulations on your retirement. Uh, we have super people within GDOT, and I'm 
proud of every one of them. I'm also very proud of Van and what uh, has been accomplished during his 30 plus years here as an involved employee throughout uh, those 30 years and a very active one as all of ours are. You know, it, it, listening to the commissioner's report this morning was uh, a very kind comment in regards to what all of our people do. And I hope that each and every one of us remember that it's not just that section of the state of Georgia that is involved in any crisis. It involves all of Georgia on the standby to help. And our GDOT folks are always there. And I could always count on Van because he, with our team in District 4, was one of those groups that always came to whatever area when he was called as each of the other involved GDOT employees. So I want to thank you for that. And uh, I only had several counties within the District 4, but he had me so that I had him on a hotline and I could call any time. And I'm telling with Tim Golden and myself involved in Johnny Floyd, it was tremendous to be able to have the response that we got from our District 4 and our District Engineer. Uh, Van, I'm very proud of you. And at this time, I would like to read the resolution in your honor that we have today. Whereas Van Mason started his Georgia Department of Transportation career in 1992 as a civil engineer technologist, as a result of his hard work, his dedication, efforts improving transportation initiatives, and outstanding leadership skills, Van progressed through the ranks. He ultimately became the district engineer for our Department of Transportation, District 4, in May of 2019, and was responsible for managing 31 counties in the Southwest Georgia region. Whereas Van holds a Bachelor's of Civil Engineering Technology degree from South Carolina State University, over the course of his career, he was our district construction manager, a district traffic engineer, assistant district manager engineer, an area engineer, and has supported the department in various roles and capacities throughout District 3, 4, and 5. Whereas colleagues who worked alongside Van or under his leadership was, will attest to his well-rounded approach to solving our problems and his desire to make the Georgia DOT the best it can be. Van's innovative solutions to transportation concerns improved safety, enhanced mobility throughout South Georgia through his supervision, our involvement in projects, whether they be large, are small. And whereas Van's first large project was supervising the widening of US-1 in Waycross as the area grew with commercial development. He was project manager for an overpass project in Folkestone, Georgia, that ensured fire emergency vehicles weren't blocked by trains. And of the $53 million project widening reconstruction of US-19 in Lee County, which was a major north-south route. Whereas Van's supervision of a smaller project in Moultrie was no less important to Southwest Georgia, it upgraded the connection of US 319 and State Route 37 and improved traffic flow from Spenceville in Moultrie, the site of the annual Sunbelt Ag Expo that attracted vendors and guests from across the, across the country, and I can say for sure across the state of Georgia also, it brought thousands of dollars to that area. And whereas for nearly 30 years, Van has committed his service and leadership to the state of Georgia and to the Georgia Department of Transportation, and has been steadfast in his efforts to ensure the department continues to be one of the most competitive and top performing DOTs in the nation. And therefore, be it resolved that the State Transportation Board recognize Van Mason for his commitment to providing a transportation system focused on innovation, safety, <laughs> substantiability, and mobility for our citizens of the state of Georgia and his exemplary service to the state of Georgia and to the Georgia Department of Transportation over the course 
of his 30 plus years. And be it father resolved, a copy of this resolution shall be included in the minutes of this meeting and a suitable copy presented to Van Mason in honor and recognition of his retirement from the Georgia Department of Transportation for the 30 years plus of service. Mr. Vice Chair, I now ask and make a motion that we adopt this resolution for Van Mason. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Resolution passes unanimously. Congratulations, Van. Let me present to you. And Van has also been that way. Van, I present to you from our board and from the Department of Transportation a resolution honoring you today. And would you like to say a few words? Okay, please. All right. Well, first of all, uh, thank you for this for this honor. It's, it's truly an honor. Uh, um, I'm not sure if I even deserve this. I, I just I was just doing my job, you know, every day. For the last 30 years, um, um, as Miss Miss Ann said, I've worked in several districts and several different offices, and um, I truly enjoyed every aspect of the department that I worked in, and and I also uh, truly enjoyed you know, all the people that I've met and all the people that I've worked with within the department, as well as um, you know our partners, um, you know various construction companies, consulting engineering companies, um, various elected officials, and whatnot. So. Um, I've truly enjoyed my career and I'm, I'm, I'm truly blessed. Thank you. I appreciate this. We at GDOT have blessed, but let me say one thing. He was a great employee, but he still remains a great friend. So thank you, Van. Okay, we're going to move on to the board committee reports. And Anne, you're up again. Got the committee report. Oh, yeah, I put them there. Up there. Sorry. What are you saying? The legislative committee convened at 1:30 p.m. on Wednesday, January the 19th. Board members present included the Vice Chair, Ann Purcell, Kevin Abel, Robert Brown, Johnny Floyd, Rudy Bowen, Jamie Boswell, Jeff Lewis, Greg Morris, and Jerry Sharon. The first order of business, Joshua Waller, the Director of Public and Government Affairs, provided an update on the first week of the state legislative session and a preview of key items. He gave a summary of the final report recommendations of the Joint Commission on E-Commerce and Freight Infrastructure Funding and concluded with a reminder that federal transportation is currently funded under the continued resolution through February the 18th. There being no further business, Vice Chair Ann Purcell adjourned the meeting at 1.38 p.m. Thank you, and uh, Finance Committee, Jamie. Thank you, sir. Finance Committee. Convened at 2 p.m. on Wednesday, January 19, 2022. Board members present included myself, Ann Purcell, Kevin Abel, Robert Brown, John Ford, Louis Doyne, Jeff Lewis, Greg Morris, and Jerry Shapiro. First order of business, Angela Whitworth, Treasurer, provided an update on the amended fiscal year 2022 and fiscal year 2023 budgets, reflecting the government's budget recommendations. She reported an increase of almost $67 million in the amended fiscal year of 2022 budget. For fiscal year 2023, she reported an increase of almost $76 million, along with a recommendation to separate the current MMO program in four separate budgetary programs for each budget, including rail, transit, ports and waterways, and aviation. There being no further business, I adjourned the meeting at 2.12 p.m. Thank you, Jamie. You can leave your mic on because you now have the administrative committee. Oh, put your mic on. 
The administrative committee convened at 2.30 p.m. on Wednesday, January 19th, 2022. Board members present included myself, Ann Purcell, Kevin Abel, Robert Brown, Johnny Floyd, Rudy Bowen, Jeff Lewis, Greg Morris, and Jerry Sharon. First order of business, Monica Ivey, GDOT's HR director, provided an update on key HR workforce initiatives. She provided an overview of the national and state workforce trends and highlighted how these trends have impacted GDOT. She then discussed GDOT's strategic response, which includes various strategic approaches, including engaging in strategic workforce planning, focusing on employee talent development, implemented innovative and more efficient enhancements to policies and hiring onboarding processes, as well as addressing recruitment and retention challenges to ensure that we have a quality, trained, skilled workforce for the future. Ms. Ivey concluded with showing how these strategic efforts have led to an increase in headcount for the past five months, but noted that GR's GDOT workforce is ever evolving, and as such, GDOT will continue to be proactive, evaluate, innovate, and adapt so that our workforce can continue to successfully deliver the department's critical mission. <clears throat> there being no further business, I adjourn the meeting at 3.11 p.m. This is the Annie and Jamie show. And <laughs> <laughs> you take the intermodal committee, please. The intermodal committee convened at 3.12 p.m. on Wednesday, January the 19th. The board members present included Vice Chair Ann Purcell, Jamie Boswell, Kevin Abel, Robert Brown, Johnny Floyd, Rudy Bowen, Jeff Lewis, Greg Morris, and Jerry Sharon. Uh, Clement Solomon, the Intermodal Division Director, provided the committee with a summary on the Joint Legislative Study Committee's final report on airport infrastructure and improvements, including its 11 recommendations to improve investment in Georgia's aviation program. The department will evaluate the recommendations and the resources available to determine if changes are needed to the intermodal aviation program. There being no further business, Vice Chair Ann Arpercell adjourned the meeting at 3.17 p.m. And finally, the Statewide Transportation Planning Strategic Planning Committee Thank you. The committee convened at 3.30 p.m. on Wednesday, January the 19th. Again, board members present included Chairman Ann Purcell, Jamie Boswell, Kevin Abel, Robert Brown, Johnny Floyd, Rudy Bowen, Jeff Lewis, Greg Morris, and Jerry Sharon. Kelly Gwynn, the branch chief in the Office of Planning, provided an update on the Transportation Alternative Program, known as TAUP, included an FY22 TAP award summary along with the information for the FY23 call for projects. TAP is a federal grant opportunity for local governments to pursue non-traditional transportation related activities. The department awarded nine TAP projects in 2022 with uh, awards totaling over $4.5 million. Our second order of business, Kelly provided an update on the two new planning lump sum programs, freight operation and rural development. The updated included a summary of the FY22 awarded projects for the lump sum programs. 55 projects were awarded with awards totaling approximately $19 million. There being no further business, Chairman Purcell adjourned the meeting at 3.51 p.m. That concludes the report. Thank you, Ann. Um, on to new business, is there any new business? for the board. Seeing none, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you.